position this year. Warmoth, one of those who will be coming in frequently with the plays as well as Mark Skeen. Inside handoff to Cyrus Hancock from the wingback position. He's down inside the 25. Stop made by number 12, Mike Faust. Mark Burns was the wing back from a year ago who platooned with Rick Johnson. Brought in the plays for Mark Medley, but this year Medley's going to involve more people in his messenger system, so they're not, it's not going to be one play in and one play out. You may stay in for two plays in a row. Fourth down and 11, and the Blue Devils are going for it. Jennings comes off the field. Brindley drops back. Over the middle, complete to Hancock. Inside the 15, inside the 10, he's got a first down to the six. So Hancock, or I should say the Blue Devils go for it on fourth down with the stop, the strong safety number 19, Joey Reese. So the first gamble of the year, so to speak. And it pays off for the Blue Devils. Another change from last year with Tony Eckler gone. Lebanon no longer with a long distance field goal kicker. Eckler, who's working his way into the defensive secondary at Tennessee Tech, could kick, hit 50 yarders in practice. Justin Usry is the place kicker this year, but does not have that strong of a leg. First and goal from the six. Lebanon knocking on the door. Juan A. Jennings tries the right side, gets free, touchdown. Thirty-seven to play. As Jennings gets congratulations. Jennings, a big game in the spring game, a senior. Getting his time as a senior. Justin Usry with a point after. Brindley to hold, and a flag is down. The kick looks wide left anyway. Brindley, a year ago, was the long snapper. Offsides against Mount Juliet, and that's a break because from this angle, of course, angles and kicking are always deceiving, but it looked like he was wide to the left on that extra point attempt. The long snapper. I believe it's Chris O'Neill. Norman Summers also a candidate for it. Kick is up. This time it's good. 357, I'm sorry, 337 to play. In the first quarter, Lebanon has drawn first blood, leading it seven to nothing. Lebanon, even with all the Graduated starters from a year ago. Optimism still high. The Blue Devils very impressive in the Jamborees last week. Expected to finish either second or third in District 7 AAA behind Murfreesboro, Oakland. Mount Juliet, which lost a good pasture a week ago. The Bears moved the ball well, but hurt themselves with turnovers. In fact, good pasture got the only score on a 40-yard interception return. The Bears dressing out 41 tonight. That's it's pretty low for a triple-A roster compared to some that Mount Juliet has had in the past, and particularly in District 9 triple-A. The Bears do have some experience. But conditioning is going to be very important, and how they can survive in the fourth quarter it will be a very big key. Warmoth will kick off. Tony Bradley from the 12. Has a wall in front of him. Goes straight ahead and has met at the 25. Among those there, I believe that was number 12, Willie Hearn, who laid the lick on Tony Bradley. So Mount Juliet with its second possession, first down and 10. They'll mark it at the Mount Juliet 26. Finish up the 11 in defense. So you mentioned the defensive line a moment ago. The linebackers, Rod Crutchfield, who saw a lot of time there last year, will get the start this year, along with number 34, Brian Johnson. Cyrus Hancock and Marcus Stewart are the cornerbacks. Jonathan Haas is at strong safety with Kevin Huddleston, the free safety. 
Brent Lawrence. Bates keeps around the right side, is forced out of bounds by Kevin Huddleston. Lawrence, a tough customer, out of bounds at the 38, first down, Mount Juliet. Mentioning the Mount Juliet coaching staff, head coach Jerry Flatt, his assistants, Jerry Kirby, former Lebanon head coach Terry Hemantoller, and two new assistants, Chris Vance and Paul Underwood. Lebanon, of course, head coached by Mark Medley in his third year at Lebanon, 42-8 and eight in four seasons as a head coach, which includes two years at Gordonsville, including two clinic bowl appearances. His assistants, Ron Marshall, Larry Grissom, Randall Hutto, and Bob Dillard. Give to the fullback, Joey Reese. Gets it up to the 39. No gain, or very little gain, second down and a long nine. There's Bob Dillard, a year ago, a uh, student teacher who is assisting, has now been hired as a full-time teacher at, at Lebanon, and he's the full-time assistant coach. Richard Anderson, meanwhile, is the other student assistant from a year ago, has now gone to Austin P as a graduate assistant, where he has former Lebanon players Jeff Crutchfield and Raymond Shockley. Second down and nine, Lawrence Fakes throws over the middle, it's complete. In the Lebanon territory, down to the 47-yard line, with a catch to tight end, number 12, Mike Faust, and a host of Lebanon defenders there to bring him down, and it took three or four. Raymond Shockley, meanwhile, mentioning him at Austin P, looking very good. He is expected to start at split end tonight as the Governors host Eastern Illinois. The so stadium Lebanon will be visiting later on. They'll be traveling to Clarksville. I believe in week five, taking on the Wildcats at Memorial Stadium. Lawrence pitches back. This is Bradley, right side, has some blocking, nailed by Jonathan Haas at the 43. Pickup of about five, second down and five. Clock ticking down, a minute 45 to play in the first quarter. See Eric Scoggins coming out. Scoggins, one of the ends. Jerry Flad using the receivers to shuttle in his plays. Lawrence gives to Bradley. Has a hole on the left side, but closed quickly by Ann Brewster and Sonny Warmoth. It'll be close to a first down, but about a couple of yards short. Mark it at the 38. Third down and one. With a minute five to play, clock is ticking. First quarter, 7 0 Lebanon. The Blue Devils on the road next week to Murfreesboro Riverdale. The game played at MTSU. Lebanon with four out of the first five games on the road. Mount Juliet will also be on the road next week at Brentwood to open District 9 AAA play. Brent Lawrence calling the signals. Fakes. Now keeps to the left side, has a first down to the 35. Tackled by Sonny Warmoth. So Mount Juliet mounting a drive. Answering Lebanon's scoring possession. 25 seconds left. Maybe time for one more play before the quarter. to the fullback Lawrence has to keep and nailed by Ann Brewster at the 35 also there for Lebanon Richard Moscardelli and that'll be it for the first quarter seven to nothing Lebanon after one quarter of play we'll be back for the second quarter right after this or second down and ten with exactly 12 minutes to play in the first half Lebanon on top seven to nothing I'm Andy Reid thank you for joining us today the first of ten Lebanon Blue Devil football games this season and hopefully more. Lawrence takes a draw to Bradley, now in trouble, and 
An illegal block in the back, nothing called. Meanwhile, Lawrence close to a first down at the 25. Looked like Moscardelli was hit from behind, but no flag thrown. And Lawrence running for dear life out close to the 25-yard line. I'm sure of the Bear offensive lineman who got a block in there, very close. They're going to bring the chains out for a measurement. So it'll be either be first and 10 or third and inches. First down, Mount Juliet. Both teams went three and out on their respective initial offensive possessions. Then Lebanon got the ball a second time, drove the length of the field for a score. Juan A. Jennings scoring on a six-yard run, and now Mount Juliet following with a drive of its own. Down just shy of the Lebanon 25. Minute, or I'm sorry, 11.25 to play in the first half. We may have a close game to match the, uh, the intensity of the rivalry. Haven't had that in recent years. Give us to Bradley. Doesn't get his footing very well and is finally brought down at the third, or at the 28. Rod Crutchfield, Sonny Warmoth there. The field is wet. Rain quite a bit this afternoon. It rained quite hard for a while. There are no puddles. The field in very good shape, but the grass is wet. And that might have some problems, cause some problems for the footing. So far, though, no rain during the game. Sort of expecting some. It looked like it was sprinkling just very lightly off and on prior to the game, but have not had any rain during the game. Second down and 12. Lawrence 